our next presenter is an East Villager, advocate for all things community, outdoor dawdler, and a reforming perfectionist. Sherry McCauley is easily distracted by life's big questions, and she's pondering some doozies these days. Won't you join me in welcoming Sherry McCauley? This is me last March after learning I have colorectal cancer that has spread to my liver. Stage four, for those of you who know the ropes, in layman's terms, really, really not good. A month before this photo was taken, my husband and I saw three doctors at my first oncology appointment. The first kept telling me I'd feel much better once I started chemo, but I didn't feel unwell. The second told me I'd be on some form of that chemo for the rest of my life. The third gave me this goals of care form to complete, but counseled against choosing resuscitation. You do not want someone breaking your ribs to restart your heart, he said. You've got stage four cancer. Later, I'd be told I had an unusually toxic reaction to my chemo drugs, but my chemo doctor, I called him the football coach, threatened to kick my ass when I told him how much I was struggling. I felt trapped. If I was truly living on borrowed time, his words, this was not how I wanted to spend it. Besides, I just wanted to live, period, and the chemo was killing me. I couldn't sleep, and when I did, I had nightmares from which I woke shouting. I found this oddly comforting. I was finding my voice again, and I was sure going to need it. I met with a psychologist and a palliative care nurse, kind women who listened. We talked about quality of life over quantity, about not letting cancer take over. I made a decision, not an easy one, the one my gut said was right at the time. I stopped chemo after only two rounds. I changed doctors, not an easy thing to do in a beleaguered system that has great intentions but still falls short on putting a patient's needs first. My new oncologist assured me we'd try a different approach if and when I was ready to start chemo again and set up regular scans. I checked resuscitation on the goals of care form. To be clear, I did not stop all treatment. I continued with what the profession calls complementary therapies. I walked, biked, ate healthy, meditated, wrote in a journal leaned heavily on the wonderful women I call the Woo Woo Love Team, an herbalist, massage therapist, a Reiki master, a shaman, an energy healer. My husband and I set off to find some joy. We celebrated our eldest son's wedding in a garden beside the bow, spent weeks in Nova Scotia with friends, did a three-day hiking trip to Skokie, and gathered with our sons and new daughter-in-law at our cabin for Christmas. That's when we learned the story was about to take a turn we did not see coming. I wish it was the story where the tumors miraculously disappear, but it's not, at least not yet. During that time, they were still busy growing, though I believe more slowly than they might have. So, no miracles yet, but there was serendipity. I made a chance observation to my oncologist, and she in turn set up a surgical consult. Oops. It may not be obvious in this sketch by my kind and gentle liver surgeon, but surgery was an option after all, with curative intent, no less. Surgeries, actually, to remove the primary tumor, several liver tumors, and most of my liver with them. I did not know that livers can regenerate. This was good news. And yet, it brought on another round of sleepless nights. I did not fear the surgeries and recovery, but now that a cure was being dangled, I feared my cancer might outrun the plan. If I let myself believe this plan could work, could I bear it if the rug got pulled out for me down the road? Each of us is born and each of us will die. We all know this on some level, but to truly know it in our bones can be a terrible, lonely thing. Talking to others about my fears was difficult. Sometimes I felt so raw, I choked on the words. Other times I screwed up my courage only to have the subject changed. Why are you talking about this now? You've got to stay positive. As if speaking of death was inviting it and ignoring it could make the fear go away. An author I love, Parker Palmer, talks about walking head on into loneliness when we're afraid. So I headed outside as often as possible and walked head on into my loneliness. I know having my feet planted on the earth grounds me and heals me. Being in nature reminds me that everything is connected and we're all part of something much bigger than ourselves. I noticed synchronicities. There were many signs, sometimes literal ones. The message was always the same. Surrender, surrender, surrender. Well, okay, but how? More than one member of the Woo Woo Love team told me that I did not have to be perfect at having cancer. <laughs> My shaman friend told me it's like floating down a river with the current. Jump in, don't fight it, just let it carry you. But carry me where? No one knows. 
not me, not my doctors, not even the woo-woo love team, and trust me, those women know a lot. And really, aren't we all in the same boat? None of you guys knows either. Any one of us could be hit by that proverbial bus tomorrow, and I could outlast you all yet. <laughs> one thing I do know is this, the universe has lessons for me, and a diagnosis like mine does not let you dodge the homework. Have you ever had that dream where you skip all the lectures all, all semester and then freak out when it's time for the finals? <laughs> I'm looking at that one in a whole new light now. The lessons for me so far are that I need to be okay with being vulnerable when I'd really rather armor up, especially around my poor little heart. I've been a helper and a pleaser all my life. Now I have to ask for help with situations I could not have imagined and learn to let go of my fear of disappointing people. This is hard for me, especially when it means challenging my medical team but as one wise doctor said to me, you know your body better than anyone. I'm learning when to speak up for myself and sometimes say, I'm not okay with this. I may be in a system that runs on protocols based on decades of data, but I am not a data point on a normalized curve. This is my body, my experience, my life. I'm also learning when to give up trying to control stuff I never had control over anyway. When I panic, I try to turn in, get quiet, let intuition take over. It does not steer me wrong. Every time I've trusted my gut these last 17 months, calm comes over me and things magically fall into place, even things that seemed impossible. On days when I nail it all, I think I'm more kind and loving with others, less judgy. Other days, I'm learning to be more kind and loving and less judgy with myself. I do not have to get cancer or life perfect. I can breathe deep, close my eyes, and imagine placing all my fears and worries in my upturned hands and giving them over to the universe. I'm learning to let myself believe this plan will work. Not embracing hope will not save me from being devastated if it fails, but allowing space for hope to grow in spite of the odds, that is powerful medicine. So here I am, two surgeries behind me, next CT scan at the end of the month. Livers can regrow, will mine? Not for me to say, but I hope and I surrender just a little. <laughs>